Hey everybody. So today I want to talk about CBTs. Now, before you comment that you can't fail a CBT, if you've got to take an award and you don't reach the standard and you pay to test and then you have to go back again and be tested again and pay again, in my mind that is a fail, fail and a retake. Um, you can put it in different terms if you want, whatever, but at the end of the day, if you don't pass it, you fail. <laughs> And I think otherwise it's an argument of semantics. And if you want to hold on to the fact that it is just not an achievement reached, then you hold on to that as hard as you do your sports sports day participation medal. I want to be real. I want to be serious with people because the actual ones that I want to talk to are more a different sect. Now, let's get going. First off, if you don't know who I am, my name is Spice110. I've been a motorcycle content creator for over 10 years and I've been riding for over 14. And I made a playlist called Tips for New Riders which is about 60 something videos to help people to cover all everything you'd possibly need to know from CBT to full full test, how to ride the bikes, everything. Everything you can think of is in that playlist. And I've helped hundreds of people get on the road. And in that time, I've talked to a lot of instructors. I've, I've listened to people. I've given feedback and advice. And people who fail their CBTs repeatedly normally fall into a couple of groups. Now, to, to not pass, you know, I'll, I'll just add that. Just, make it nicer to not pass your cbt is not a bad thing necessarily it, it can be tricky to do but what it generally means is you just aren't quite safe enough and they don't want to take you on the road or you do something on the road that is going to get you killed now for a lot of people the only reason they fail is because they're nervous or they just need a bit more training to fully understand what they're supposed to be doing um, a little bit more understanding of lane positioning and stuff like that could be the reason why you failed and for the majority of people, you know, they go and take the CBT for the second time and they have no problems and pass it straight away. So I'm not talking to anyone who's just failed. I'm talking about the people that repeatedly do it, who repeatedly come back with issues from CBTs. And the reason I'm saying this is because there is a trend and it would be good for you as a person to help you grow if you didn't approach life in the way that people seem to be approaching the CBT. So as I say, sometimes people are just a bit nervous, they need a bit more training. Sometimes it is the school that is crap. And I have a video talking about bad motorcycle schools that don't give proper training in the CBT. Good news is the government are actually cracking down on that quite hard uh, because it, they realized how out of hand that was getting and they've started actually going after people for that sort of stuff. So if you failed your CBT a few times in a row, I'm not saying this is you, it is how you deal with it. If you can accept that you've got places to grow, you've got things to learn, and it's, you know, we're not all born knowing how to ride a motorcycle, that's fine. And even if it takes you a few goes, that's fine. These are the ones I want to talk to. The ones that come back and say, it was the bike, it was the sky, it was the ground, it was the instructor, it was the other people I was with, it was this, it was that, it was everything else in the world apart from them. It just boggles my mind the amount of people who come back from a CBT give you a completely different story as to what probably really happened and just blame everything around them. And the problem is, when someone's new into biking, for instance, they don't know how easy it is to spot one of these people doing these things. I mean, you will never hear such a list of excuses as to why someone crashed off of the racetrack than a 125 rider on a CB2 who crashed in a corner. It was diesel, it was gravel, it was my cheap Chinese tyres, it was this, it was that, it was blah, 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 blah. At no point did they go, yeah, I went into that corner way too hard and slammed on the front brake, straight lining or dropping the bike, you know. Um, that is what you should do because that was the reality of it and making mistakes is fine. I made a video called Every Time I Dropped a Motorcycle in Seven Years, it was a few years ago, and it had, it, I could drop loads of bikes. Admittedly, they're all drops, not crashes, thankfully. <laughs> Now we'll say here, if you think I'm talking about you specifically, it's personally, if you're watching this, we've had this sort of discussion at some point, I can assure you I'm not talking about you individually. There are so many people that fall into this that I'm just addressing all of them. And it doesn't always even apply to CBTs, it can be the full test, it can be all sorts of things. But yeah, if you try and blame everything else around you, it's you're never going to progress, you're never going to move forward because you're not actually being realistic about what the problem is. It's not the sky, the ground, the bike, the tyres, it's you. It's just a skill you've got to learn. And when people feel insecure, uh, feel like they need to achieve, aren't willing to be seen to need to learn, to fail, they overcompensate, they, they start, you know, you don't learn well, you don't make good reactions, you don't make good decisions. I mean, then what happens, I will say here, which is very, very not right, 
is that sometimes people off the back of this go on the internet, and this is where I see the comments of them spouting off about their school, saying about how terrible the school is, how this is bad, how that's bad. And when you listen to what they say, you're like, well, actually, it sounds like you're the problem here, not them. You know, in my, in my experience, I have seen scenarios where I've seen both sides. I've actually heard back from the driving school about a scenario, and they're like, well, it wasn't quite like that. Now, as with everything, there's two truths, one from each side, but the truth is interlaced in the middle, so exactly everything is hard to say. But there is this underlying, continuing thing that the people that fail their CBTs time and time and time again, they never just say, oh man, I can just never seem to pick this up, I'm just, I'm not doing well at the gears, or I'm, I'm just, it's just not, it's not clicking for me. You just don't hear that. You just hear, it's, it's this, it's that, it's everything else. And if you can't identify the issue that is actually causing you your problems, well, then you're not going to solve it, are you? Grow up. Accept. We make mistakes. Sometimes we're not good at things. I've failed things multiple times in a row. Do you know how many times I have taken motorcycle suspension apart? And I've even told people in the past, remember, before you take them out of the yokes to crack off the top cap so you can undo them. Do you know how many times I've had to put suspension back into yokes just to, t uh, to crack the top cap off so I can loosen it? I'm not going to tell you because I don't know because I don't have enough fingers and toes. And another secondary part of this very often is that it starts with it's the CBT is just a money-grabbing exercise. I would just like to highlight to you that the alternative, if it's like a car, is that you pay about £140 a day to rent a bike and pay for training. £140 a day until you're proficient enough to ride that bike to pass the test. The CBT is cheap as hell. There is no equivalent in any other vehicle, to my knowledge, that allows you to take a simple test, which you can't fail apparently, but you do have to retake sometimes if you don't pass, that allows you to train on the road to do your full test, to learn for bigger bikes. That's why it's there. It is dirt cheap in comparison to everything else. Even though, yes, okay, bikes are getting more expensive and things are not as cheap as they used to be, it's still a 125 or a 50cc on the road on a CBT is still gonna be your cheapest form of transport apart from electric push bikes that don't really require insurance or anything like that. And that is why I've always said, if you want to get a 50cc, don't. Just buy an electric push bike, because basically you'll get the same performance, more ability to go off in different places. You don't have to pay insurance. You don't have to pay tax. You don't have any of the same sort of worries about getting points and speeding fines or anything like that. You know, if it's a road legal one and you're being sensible with it. As I said, I'd love everyone to be riding motorcycles. I think they're absolutely fantastic machines. I think they teach you a lot about responsibility for your own you know, life because you know, you're you unlikely to hurt anyone else on one of these machines. And if you disrespect them, they'll remind you very, very quickly about how soft and squidgy you are and how it doesn't matter how right you think you are. You know, it's the same mentality you find a lot of new riders have, especially in these sort of dash cam videos, that they think that just because they have right away, they have right away. Being right and under a truck is still a bad thing. <laughs> Remember, on a CBT, they're only trusting you with a still 125. You have no idea how much more power this bike, which has only got about 40 brake horsepower, has than a, uh, than a 125. Then you get onto something properly big, like a 600, to, you know, 1,000. You haven't got a chance to understand the amount of power you've got there. And people go on 125s and think that, oh yeah, I can ride anything, I'm rossy. The thing a lot of people seem to miss is that passing the CBT, passing your bike test, is not just about riding the bike. It's about understanding the use of the roads and doing things that keep you safe. You could ride a bike fantastically on a track. If you know nothing about the roads, you'll probably die in a few days. <laughs> the rules are one thing, but if you think everyone's going to abide by them, you're wrong, because you probably won't. Just remember that. So you've all got to give and take a little bit here and there. Cars can't see out of them too easily, so accept that. You know, you don't pull out of nowhere and then start blaming the car driver for it. Well, unless you've got a dash camera and then you start smashing the hell out of the camera and going, No, you're on camera, man! You're on dash cam! You're on dash cam! And all you've done is made yourself look like a penis. 
So this is to say, people who fail their CPTs repeatedly, as I've said earlier on, most of you just need a bit more training, a bit more uh, experience, and you know who you are. If you find yourself, if you think the reason you failed your CBT is everything else other than you, then this is who this video is for. As I say, I'm not, uh, you're young probably, you know, it's just, I was an idiot when I was younger, I'm 36 now, okay? I was an idiot when I was younger. When I was 35, complete idiot. <laughs> and I say that every single year. <laughs> Honestly, as I say, I wish you the very best of luck on doing your CBT and passing it. I just think if you're a bit more realistic, if you stop the bravado, if you just listen to the instructor and, and you know, bring those walls down a little bit, you know, just, just speak to him, be honest, what are you struggling with, with the instructor, don't worry about looking weak or, or not knowing, and you'll find yourself do much, much better, very quickly. If you agree with this video, find it interesting, useful, or you want to add anything in the comments, please do. Subscribe if you're new here, because I'm on my way to 100k, and I really appreciate it. If you're looking to pass your CBT and you're having problems, and you don't feel like you're one of these people who's just lying to themselves, then my playlist, Tips for New Riders, could be great for you. I've got videos to say on how to ride a bike, just, just everything. Go and look at it, you'll see. Um, and, I, and I will say from the comments I've had, not from my own opinion, that it has done very well to help a lot of people get through things they didn't understand previously. There you go. Until the next one, bye-bye.